Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Abraham Leal and today we're gonna have a little bit of music uh, while we learn a little bit about 3D. So uh, yesterday we had a live stream and I did a texturing uh, process for the Pokeball. If you wanna follow along, I did a Safari ball. Um, I don't have the render right now with me, but you can check on our live stream section and um, and review that whole process because for tomorrow or in the next couple of days, I'm gonna be building a scene. So we're not gonna be covering the uh, texturing process on a video, it's on the live on the channel as well. So today there was a really, really interesting topic that uh, uh, was brought up during the live stream, which was the hand-painted textures. So I've uh, done a little bit of hand-painted textures before here on the channel. I think we did a skull last year, but I want to just review and show you a couple of new like processes, processes and techniques that I've found to create something that looks very uh, hand-painted uh, without having to struggle that much inside of uh, Photoshop or other softwares. But before we do that, I just want to remind you guys that we are running our Black Friday sale. Today, I believe, is the, I think it's the second to last day. I think the code is going to be available for tomorrow as well, but don't take my word for it. Make sure you use the code BF2022 in Udemy to get a 90% of any of the courses that you are going to find there, except for the two most recent ones. But we have, uh, I think it was 59 courses available for you. And of course, if you want to support the channel, uh, getting any of those courses would be great uh, for us. So now let's uh, talk about hand painted textures. We're using a little bit of uh, League of Legends creators thing. So hand painted textures have been around for quite a while now and League of Legends is definitely one of those uh, pioneers of the whole process. And one of the reasons why hand painted textures came into existence, it was not only due to an artistic choice, it was actually due to a performance choice. Back in the day, if you guys remember World of Warcraft, the very early versions, like this sort of stuff that you find here, it was, it was a massive world, right? And computers back then didn't have as much power as they do now. So in order to get the most of it, they discovered that by painting textures directly on the models, painting the lights, the shadows, the ambient occlusion, like all of these maps, they were gonna be able to get away with a really nice looking uh, character, creature, weapon, anything, without having to spend uh, like resources on a normal map or on a height map or on a bump map or on a metallic map or any of those maps. You would only need one single map and and you could get things to look really, really, really nice. The only downside to hand painted textures, or one of the downsides, is that if you paint in the light and then you bring that uh, object into a different light scenario, like let's say you grab this um, sword right here and you bring it to a dark cave, the sword's still gonna like glow and, and look like it's receiving light from somewhere. More often than not, players don't really care about that because the gameplay is usually what drives the, the games, right? Um, but it's just important to understand that that can happen. Nowadays, some uh, maps get like normal maps and stuff, so they do react to light a little bit better, but you always have a little bit of that like baked light into the objects. I personally don't mind. I think it's a really nice artistic choice, um, but it definitely takes a little bit of time. So the method I'm going to show you is we're going to start with a very procedural way to build this like light information into our object, and then we're going to do a little bit of hand painted stuff. So the first thing we need to do is need to go to texture set settings. I actually have a slightly different setup now. My tablet is here. It was uh, here before. So I might like the audio might be a little bit weird in certain parts of the of the video. And um, and I might fumble a little bit because I'm trying to use the shortcuts on my tablet. But anyway, so texture set settings, we're going to go down here, bake mesh maps, and we're going to bake them at 4K is fine. I mean, it's a very simple object, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, but 4K should be more than enough, especially for the ambient occlusion. The ambient occlusion is going to be one of the most important ones on this uh, on this like uh, project right here. And uh, there we go. So now that we have this, the the way that you're normally going to hear about the uh, like well, there's a lot of ways to digital paint things, right? But usually, usually they will tell you that if you work with grayscale, you're going to be able to get something a little bit easier without much effort. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with some layers here. Start with a fill layer. This is going to be our base layer. It's just going to be a, a basic white layer. And let's start with the shadows. Shadows are usually the one of the most important parts. So there's going to be two shadows for this one. This is going to be, again, my, let's call this base layer. And this is very important. The base layer, I'm going to turn everything off. I just want to be working with color. We're only going to be working with color throughout this whole uh, project right here. Uh, technically, you could even press the letter as C, which is going to bring you into flat mode, which is just the, the color channel. Uh, but having a little bit of light is, is, is going to make it easier as well. Another thing you can do is just turn on the roughness channel and bring it all the way up. So that's a, a matte uh, surface like this. 
Uh, now I'm going to add a new field layer and this I'm going to call the ambient occlusion. As I mentioned before, the ambient occlusion is a really important part of, uh, of any like uh, painting. And, and there's a lot of like uh, illustrators that I've seen use this ambient occlusion pass as one of the first passes to, to kind of like paint how your object is going to be. So this ambient occlusion pass, what we're going to do is we're going to use a field layer. Again, there's a little bucket over here. And over here in the base color, I'm actually going to look for the ambient occlusion map, which is right here. And as you can see, we get this. We get a, a map that has the whites and the dark channels of the ambient occlusion baked into the texture. Now, here's where the fun begins. First of all, we're going to change this to a multiply because I want to get rid of the white colors and I just want to see the dark colors. And as you can see, by multiplying, we get the very nice shadows without adding any light into the object. Now, we can right-click this thing, add a filter, and we can do a filter that only modifies the color. And on the filter, we can look for a levels. If we just look over here, there should be one called a levels. Uh, where is it? The glow, gradient, height, clamp. Well, we can just look it up. Oh, we don't have levels on this one. That's fine. We can use something like a um, histogram. I think the histogram can work. Let's try this. No, not really. What I want to do here is I want to try to to crunch some of these things. Or another thing that we can do here, let's get rid of this thing. I'm going to add a black mask. And then on this black mask, I am going to add the filter. It's going to be a filter. Well, we can add the ambient occlusion as well, like an ambient, uh, ambient occlusion mask. Actually, let me just start that over real quick. I'm going to add a black layer, black color layer, which is going to be my main shadow. There we go. Then on this thing, I'm going to add a black mask. I'm going to add a field layer, and on that field layer, we're going to use the ambient occlusion. There we go. As you can see, it's right there, but it's inverted. So I'm going to right-click. I'm going to add a levels now. And now with this levels, we can invert this thing, and we can play around with the values. So as you can see, one of the fun things about this is we can get a really, really nice, interesting effect on the shadows. So a little bit more shadows if we want. We can push this lower values right here, and it's going to darken everything just a tad bit, something like this. Now, the only problem with the shadows is, as you can see, they look like soft shadows, not like hand-painted shadows. So there's a very cool filter here, if we go to filter, called the uh, Blur Slope. And what the Blur Slope does, as you can see right here, it's going to create a like mathematically weird blur that looks kind of like brush strokes. So if we decrease the intensity of this, like this, as you can see, we're going to get something that looks like, like actual brush strokes that we would normally do. You can change uh, things here on the um, on the elements, such as the quality of the brush stroke, so it's like harsher or softer. We're gonna go for a, a, a big one. We can uh, change the intensity, and, and that way we can have a little bit more here. And uh, there we go. That's a that's a very good and easy way to add just like a very interesting effect on the shadow, so that not everything is like perfectly smooth and perfectly soft. So that would be my first shadow, the ambient occlusion pass. Let's call this ambient occlusion. Now we're going to add the main shadow. So I'm going to add another field layer. Again, just a color. This is going to be a dark color. I'm going to add a black mask and I'm going to add a generator. And in the generators, we have a couple of generators that are really good for this one. If you want to keep it uh, like balanced, like if you always want the shadow to be coming from the bottom up, you can try using the 3D linear or the 3D distance, any of those ones work. But I'm actually going to go a little bit crazier. I'm going to give it like a three quarter look to the whole thing. So I'm going to go here to light. And what the, you can, as you can see right here, we get a light that's pretty much like shining darkness into the object and we can move this thing around. So what I want to do is I want the light to be coming from below and a little bit to the side. Okay. So let's go to like here and here. Let's invert this. There we go. Something like this, I think. I want the shadow on, on one of the like the sides of this thing. Let me increase the glossiness here a little bit and the highlight level. There we go. So you can see how the light is right now on this side and, and all of the darkness is on this side. So let's rotate this around. There we go. I want to rotate this a little bit as well. See if I can get it. There we go. Uh, and ooh. Again, 
we're gonna have to play a little bit with the sliders there we go something like this now we can again play around with the with the glossiness let's really soften this up a little bit of attenuation and there we go so again if we go to c which is the channel you're gonna see that this part of the pokeball is a little bit more highlighted than this part right here which is a lot the darker right uh and that's the that's what we want to go for again we can play around with the with the highlight here there we go let's go a little bit darker something like that really want to make this thing soft soft transition so i really like this but as you can see it's a little bit harsh right here what can we do we can add a blur i can add a filter here and we're gonna add a blur pass we're gonna really push it push this blur so as you can see we're baking even like a little highlight right there that looks very very nice we're baking this shadow this is the channel this is the the again the, the color channel the only channel that we have we can multiply this as well if we want to see a little bit of the things underneath or we can just like uh, lower the the intensity of this thing just a tad bit right there uh, or even on here on the light like there's there's ways to soften it up but there we go as you can see we get this really interesting like a uh, light transition on the on the element so that's it we got the the light uh, or the dark uh, shadows this is going to be our main shadow some people like to add an extra layer of shadow um by doing the following so we're going to do another a fill layer it's going to be a dark color i'm going to do a black mask and i'm going to do a generator and this is going to be a gradient so i'm going to use the 3d linear uh thing as you can see right now it's on the top we're going to invert it so it's on the bottom like that and then i'm going to add the same filter that we used before i'm going to add a filter it's going to be the blur slope on this whole thing we start intensifying this as you can see we're gonna get this sort of like grungy effect everywhere and it's gonna make it look like a like brush strokes that were like um modified uh, with each other so as you can see this is gonna be quite quite dark there on the bottom i do think this is a little bit too intense so i'm gonna bring it down a little bit so that we do get a little bit of that shadow right there or actually i kind of want to keep it high because i do want to have like a really dark shadow right there but i'm gonna go to my 3d linear gradient and we can bring the gradient down a little bit so that only the very bottom part of the object is like really really dark again this is the channel this is not the material this is the material this is pure color so if you don't have any lights on your scene this is how the pokeball is going to look which as you can see it's not that bad right now this is what we're going to call like extra shadow now we're going to go for another one which is going to be the light now we want to add the light now i am going to grab this main shadow i'm going to bring it all the way to the top Select this one and this main shadow we're gonna change to white and of course on the light uh, filter we're probably gonna have to modify this and move it to the other side so that this thing is hitting it from the angle that we want uh let's get rid of the blur for now and we're definitely gonna bring the the, the glossiness down probably like a high highlight level here because the, the light should be a lot less right and again, we can play a little bit around with the with the position of this thing. There we go, almost there. There we go. So right around there. So you can see it's kind of like a like a three quarter thing. This one, I am gonna use linear dodge, and I am gonna bring this thing down because we don't want much light, and we do need a blur. So I'm gonna do a filter. Where is it? Filter and blur. Uh, blur slope, I think, could work fine. Just reduce the intensity a little bit. As you can see, this is also going to paint a little bit of highlight on these areas, which uh, I do think looks quite, quite nice. Um, and uh, here we need to decide whether we want it to be on the top or on the bottom. We can probably bring it all the way down. No, not under the ambient occlusion, but probably like a little bit higher, like there. I think that one looks good. So as you can see, again, this is the material and this is the actual element. We are painting a lot of light information. If you want to keep things a lot more neutral, then you definitely want just like a top view and a bottom view, uh, like shadow. But I want to go a little bit intense with this one to get a little bit more contrast. And that's it. We got our main uh, our main shadows. Now, we probably do want a little bit of, uh, of a highlight for this one. And uh, this is where the, um, the paint layer is going to come into place or another field layer. I'm going to call this highlight. I'm gonna right click add a black mask this one's gonna be white only 
only color and it's gonna be really 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 white i normally tell you guys to never select like the full or the highest uh element because it becomes a little bit difficult to control so i'm gonna paint the highlight right there and then following a little bit of the like form sections you can paint a little bit here and here if you have your uh, pen tablet and you have uh size and flow with pen pressure you're gonna be able to kind of like blend this thing in a little bit better there we go and now what we can do is we can also go here and add a filter and use the blur slope as you can see it's gonna blur the whole thing it's gonna give it this very nice like faceted facet faceted looks that's what we're saying there we go you can go for a 10 the intensity so we get smaller frag fragments there we go and the, it might not be a bad idea to change this to linear dodge and then lower the intensity because we do want to add this sort of like blend but it shouldn't be that intense so something like that again just to paint a little bit of the of the highlight now you can definitely tell this highlight is like a little bit weird right so let's fix it up a little bit i'm gonna go back to my uh, highlight here and on the mask we can actually use our um our brush and if we use right now we're using grayscale we can paint a smaller section here and we can kind of blend in a little bit more so as you can see we're painting kind of like some gradients into the into the blur depending on how how much we want to like fade it out i i actually remapped my um my color picker thing to C, to my C key, there we go. So you can see that we have like rings of light right there. And uh, we can add a blur first. So we can start with a blur, add filter, blur. I'm gonna right click and bring this down, move effect down. So the blur is gonna happen first. And then after we blur that light, we get the, um, the blur slope. So you can combine things, which is a really, really, really strong way to, to paint, as you can see this sort of like light and stuff. We're gonna bring this down a little bit or maybe we can keep it high but i'm gonna go to my blur slope maybe increase the intensity a little bit more maybe even here on the blur there we go see how nice this transition looks now like look at the difference between a flat surface and this interesting like highlight effect and there we go as you can see now we get a very very cool looking uh basic like light shape and again if i press uh M, this is the material, this is how it would look with just like a basic light, which gives us a really nice stylized effect. And this is how it looks just with the color, which is also quite impressive. One of the secrets about uh, like hand painted stuff is you wanna make sure that when you don't have any light, when it's just a flat color, it still reads as the form that you're looking for. So all of this guys, I'm gonna, I don't wanna control G. I was gonna control G, but actually I need, to, I need them to be here. So I'm gonna add a new field layer and now we can go for the colors. I'm gonna go for a red color. Again, no, I'm not gonna go for the highest red just yet. I'm gonna call this a red. Right click, add a black mask. And on the black mask, I'm gonna select uh, this a geometry up here, right there. And of course, overlay or linear dodge or multiply. Like there's a lot of things that we can try. I actually think a screen, nah, screen, no. One quick trick here, you can click on anything. And as long as this thing is blue, you can just use your mouse keys to try and find the best like blending mode or the one that looks the best. I think overlay is probably going to be the best one. Yeah, overlay definitely gives us the best effect right here. So let's give it overlay. There we go. As you can see, we get this. Now, I can definitely tell that the highlight that I have right here is a little bit too much. So we're probably going to have to, to go back here, select like a black color and just like remove some of this highlight, right? Because we don't want to have as much information right here. Um, we can just like feel another black mask right there. That that white thing that we're seeing, that's coming from something else. It's probably the main light over here. There we go, it's this one. So it's this light right here. I want to definitely like move it around. There we go. So we get something a little bit more like this. And then we can go back to the highlight and just use a small little highlight there. Let's do a filter, blur, blur the hell out of this. 
and then we can do a filter slope here. There we go. We get this. And now it looks a little bit more like shiny plastic, right? And we can, of course, like lower the intensity here if it's a little bit too much. I think this one is the one that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna lower it a little bit more. Perfect. Something like that. I do want to bring a little bit of a uh, highlight to this like button right here. So I'm going to go to the mask here. In this case with my tablet. I'm going to paint in a little bit of effect right there. You can see how the, the blur is, is happening there. So I might need to be a little bit more aggressive. We can even paint a little bit on this corners and this is where that where the hand painted stuff comes into play right because we're going to be selecting or, or painting specific areas of the element that makes sense for our for our highlights to work look at that not bad right not freaking bad cool now uh let's do the white area because i know this is white already but this part right here i want to go for a little bit more like a cream sort of thing so i'm going to do another few layer let's go for like a like a warm, like tan color like this. Black mask, we fill this lower part. And again, we go probably overlay. There we go. That one looks quite nice. We definitely need to increase the saturation here a little bit. And uh, we're probably gonna reduce the saturation. So I wanna go, I, I do wanna have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of uh, color there, but not that much. And that's it. Now that we have this, now we can go, we already have a very nice like dark transition here on the back. Here's where you can go. This is the extra shadow you guys remember. So we can go to this one and be like, hey, why not just grab the basic color that we had right here and go for like a dark saturated color of that tone, right? So as you can see, it's going to give us a, a really interesting effect because it's following the, the sort of tone that we had before. And instead of being a completely... Um, a completely weird uh, effect if we get this now i want to do something similar with the with the uh, red color so i'm gonna do another field layer and we're gonna do a red or dark red effect i'm gonna add a black mask i'm only gonna select this thing right here and then i'm gonna right click and i'm gonna add the generator it's gonna be again a 3d linear generator we're gonna invert and we're gonna multiply this generator so it only affects the thing right there and if we increase it as you can see right here we're going to start seeing the sort of like dark color, like covering parts of the of the Pokeball, right? Now that we have this, we can again go to our uh, filters and we can do our slope filter. Which is going to create a very nice breakup here for the for the shadows. Like that. We can, of course, play with some of the parameters here to be able to push this thing. We can change the seed a little bit and it's going to give us a really, really nice dark red color. I would of course go overlay with this one or, or some sort of like a blending mode and just play around with how intense I want this to be. And one of the cool things about doing this sort of like hand painted effect is that um, it's very procedural so that at any point I can, I can just like start playing around. For instance, here, I wanna bring the balance down. We can find just like the little border there on the it's very heavy. Uh, I will say that it, it is quite heavy. It's a quite heavy effect. But we can play around and find like the perfect, perfect. Color. I still think this is a little bit too saturated. So I'm going to desaturate it a little bit more. So it's more towards the whites. I still want to have a, a little bit of a different effect, but there we go. And again, if we take a look at this as a material, the material looks really, really nice. Just keep in mind that that light is always going to be baked on top of the object. Now I'm going to do one final pass or a couple of uh, final passes here. I'm gonna do a, another light pass, but this one's gonna be a warm light. So we're gonna go for the sort of like golden light. I'm gonna add a black mask, add the generator. We're gonna use another light generator. This one's gonna be coming straight from the top like this, because I just wanna hit like the highlights of the elements. Uh, we're also gonna change this to, or add this to a filter and add this as a blur slope filter. So we get this sort of like nice uh, like breakup right there. Uh, and if we go back to light, we can play around with the, the glossiness or the highlight level probably a little bit less or a little bit more attenuation so that we don't get as much light on the bottom parts and then this is going to go into a linear dodge and we're going to really bring this thing down mm, maybe not linear dodge let's try let's see what others oh that one looks really nice um it's i think it's 
saturation addition or something. That looks really nice. Probably with like a 5% or like 10%. Just a, you know, a little bit of a, of a glow right there. Like a, like a yellow glow overall. I think that looks really, really interesting. And uh, finally, some of you might be like, well, can we add, you know, a little bit more something like scratches, for instance? And the answer is yes. One of the cool things about this whole process, especially working when working inside of a substance, is that as long as you know how the, soft, the, the software works, by the way, you can learn more about it in the courses that we're offering with our promo code BF2022 in Udemy. Um, it's very easy to mix and match techniques and, and, uh, and different like elements. So here I'm going to add a fill layer. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go for like a dark gray color, like symbolizing the metal that we might find. It might go to the blue colors. And then I'm gonna say add a black mask, right click, add a field layer, and we can look for scratches. The scratches grunge. And as you can see, we're gonna get scratches. Now you always wanna like merge colors together so that you get a better effect. So in this case, we can go for something like an overlay, I think, or like a dark effect if you wanna go there. Uh, this is where even like a little bit of height might be a good idea. Usually, uh, if, if we if you have access to what's the word, if you have access to to normal maps and stuff, it could work because as you can see, we get this. So you would you would get like a normal um, a normal map with this sort of like detail. But uh, yeah, that that's it, guys. Uh, again, if we go here into the eye ray, which is the the render, we don't need need uh, to have like a like a light scenario or anything. To make this look like very again very hand painted it's gonna look perfectly fine just as a flat image again this is flat image no light information this is just the color and all of this information is going to be baked down into our uh pokeball so with this we pretty much create a a very nice looking hand painted uh, pokeball texture i uh, hope you guys like this video um and uh tomorrow or, or in the next couple of days I'm, I'm still not sure if it's gonna be am i gonna be able to record it for tomorrow hopefully i will um, but yeah, we'll do the little scene. We're probably not going to use this one. This is just, uh, again, a, a little like, uh, uh, extra that I wanted to share because the, the question came during the live stream. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys like this uh, final result. Let me know what you think in the comments and, uh, I'll be happy to see you next time. Don't forget that we have the promo code. Make sure to share it, subscribe, hit the little bell icon. You know, the drill, it always helps the channel. We're at 31,000 subscribers. We just hit 31,000 subscribers during the live stream, I think. Um, so we're very, very happy with how the channel is growing. Thank you very much for everything. And I'll see you guys back tomorrow. Bye-bye.